Hello and welcome to Temporal, part of the interview series with Ahwal News Online. Today, uh, we are going to talk about the straining new phase we, the humans on this planet, uh, entered into because of the COVID-19 pandemic to reflect uh, specifically on its impact on music, arts, the glo global artistic community, the uh, interaction between musicians and the public, performance and, and, and the audience and the possible financial burdens on the pandemic may impose over uh, global creativity of the artists. My special guest today is one of the most prolific musicians of jazz who has defined the ground on which the music evolved for six decades to this day. A virtuoso of guitar, a fantastic composer, group leader, a trailblazer, and according to his saying, a guru, because he's over 60 years old, John McLaughlin. Thank you for joining us, John. An honor and great pleasure to see you and talk to you again, albeit from a social yes, distance. Yes, yes, it's been a while. Thank you, Yavuz. Um, let me begin by asking you on private level, how are you and family dealing with it? And how are your feelings about the pandemic? What it seems to tell us all? We are fortunately healthy and happy. Um, we are, our days really pass with, uh, between uh, yoga, meditation, music, cooking, cleaning, um, and of course, always uh, some hours of communication with our extended families, which is really all over the world, in Australia, in California, in, in Germany, in the UK, in, in a few other places. So uh, we are very happy uh, under the circumstances and extremely fortunate because there are millions and millions who are in a lockdown, uh, a lockdown rather, they are blocked from circulating freely. Um, and uh, we are all going through various degrees of limit to our life, um, others much greater than ours. And so I have great empathy for these people who are suffering. Um, as far as culturally concerned, as far as the music concerned, of course, uh, everything has been cancelled. Uh, right. Like. I think between musicians and 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 actors, uh, only the painters uh, can pull out of this because they work alone. And we don't. We have to travel to to work. But so, you can compose. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. But you have to. You need inspiration to compose Yavuz. Right. <laughs> You can, I cannot, as maybe some people can, they can just sit down and write. I cannot, I have to, I have to hear it and then I can write it. This is, this, is, this is the only thing how it works. Although there are exceptions and this happened this week, but only because uh, necessity, and you know what they say, necessity is the mother of invention because tomorrow will be the 100th birthday, the centenary of Pandit Ravi Shankar. Right. And there was to be um, a large festival event concert in London uh, tomorrow, um, which I was to attend. It's organized by his two daughters, uh, Anushka Shankar and Nora Jones. And of course, it's completely cancelled. So um, there was a request: What can we do? Uh, some of us who, who because uh, I don't know whether you know it, but I was very fortunate to be accepted as a kind of um, extracurricular student of Pandaji mm -hmm. in the 1970s. Right, um, and. Uh, he was very dear to me, and I got to meet him many times after that period. 
all the way to till 2001. Um, I got to meet him. In any event, so um, the only thing I can do really is music. So I, I've written a very short piece. I sat down and I wrote something. Actually, I didn't write anything. I improvised. Mm. Um, and, uh, but it, it's maximum uh, 60 seconds long because it has to go on Instagram and uh, mm. Facebook. And, <coughs> excuse me. This is the only way the musicians can do something. Right. Uh, especially uh, if it's for, for, I think, Instagram. I'm not so familiar with the, all of the media, but this is what I've heard. So it's 60 seconds or 59 seconds long. And uh, this is only my homage to, to uh, the memory of Pandaji, who was so dear to me and helped me so much in so many ways, mm. as he did really tens of thousands of right. other people, other music students. So there was the, the exception, but it was very short. Uh, definitely wasn't a symphony. So, uh, and if, uh, at some point, I'm sure you can you can hear it what it is. Um, after tomorrow, it will, it will go up on the on the media. Well, we we look forward to this. Maybe the less is more. Uh, it will mean much more than than longer periods. Less is more. It's 60 seconds will tell so much. Well, it, this really is the way I speak, isn't it? Mm. I, can, I can say words, but I don't think words can go to the heart so right. quickly as music. Um, John, the pandemic has a vast scope of unforeseen consequences, of course. None of us have any idea now where it will lead us. I talk to the Turkish jazz musicians these days, festival organizers, friends of mine, festival say organizers. Again. Festival organizers, Turkish jazz musicians that I talk to across the continent, um, people that are in music business, everyone seems puzzled, concerned, and also in reflection. A piano player from Brooklyn, Ethan Iverson, I think summed it quite astutely. He says, one, in three points, one, the truth must be faced, two, crisis is opportunity, three, Optimism doesn't cost a penny. So what do you think of the consequences of uh, COVID-19 on music output, artistry, finances of musicians, a lot of musicians, for example, in, in Manhattan or New York, to give an example, pay rents. Uh, and what will happen to them? Any ideas at this point where this, this uh, epidemic leads and impacts on, on the artistic community? Well, your question addresses uh, a, a very, actually it's very personal, because how, how does a, a pandemic affect, affect you? How does anything affect you? Um, I think it was Shakespeare who said, um, events in themselves are neither good nor bad until we start thinking about them. And of course, straight away, something of this nature, a pandemic, uh, is um, actually awful to face and we are not out of the woods yet. In fact, I, I'm, I'm very nervous about where it's headed. Um, musicians, uh, it's catastrophic really, but it's not just now with, with the, this um, COVID-19. It's been happening a long time, Yavuz. Um, because over the years, as you know, I'm now one of the elders, um, and I try to help a number of younger musicians. And the situation is appalling, really, today, mm -hmm. because there's no record industry. I'm sure you've heard this a million times before. Right. Um, without, without being able to make a record, how do you get known? And it's very easy to say, yes, we'll do something on YouTube, but this requires production. And when you think there's probably 10 million uh, videos on the YouTube, um, you get lost in the shuffle. So, relating to what I said at the, at the outset, how we react to this situation is of critical importance. 
and I agree with with the with the musician from Brooklyn. What was his name? Uh, Ethan Iverson. Ethan okay. Iverson. Uh, and it is absolutely. We have to take it as a challenge. We have to we have to accept it and uh, and use it as a stimulus and use it as a as a as a if I dare use the word an inspiration, mm -hmm. but I think provocation would be closer to it. But in music, and particularly in the music that I play uh, with my musicians, when I go on stage or into the studio, I want to be provoked in the sense that I don't want to, to play what I know. I want to go through the barrier into the unknown. But to do that, we need the help from our friends. And so we have to provoke in the nicest sense of the word, and we have to provoke the other. So this situation itself is a colossal provocation to do something. In fact, just very recently, one of my protege who is in, in the US, I said, and he's such a talent, uh, but he's suffering, he's suffering from no work. Uh, and he's such an, uh, an important musician, in my opinion. I said, you have to now form your own band. Mm -hmm. You have to just take the bull by the horns and you have to, you have to, abandon throw caution to the wind and be who you really are because in in the end the goal of music especially in improvised music is to be who you are Javus, isn't it yeah. i mean we what do we do when we improvise in music what are we saying yes we're playing notes we are playing but this is the medium and the message, there can only be one message, and this is your life, your, the life, your story, in fact. Mm. And how do you feel about this life? How do you feel about your relationship with the music, with your instrument, with the people around you? And you can extend it to God or the universe, the great spirit, the infinite. How strongly do you feel about this? And how articulate are you about these feelings? Mm. Can you articulate them? Because this is the only story we have at this moment in our lives. And, and, the, and the moment is the only moment, the present moment, the only moment. And this is what we are in when we are improvising. We are living absolutely in the present moment. Mm. So. I think this is also a stimulus. We can use it as a stimulus to be here right now. And right here, right now, we have so much more capacity in us than even we know. Mm. So it's by provocation that we, f we see what we are made of. Mm. But our capacity is infinite, Yavuz. It's mm. unbelievable that what we're capable of. Mm. But we have to believe it. We have, to, we have to feel it in our bones. I can't do anything. It's what I said to this young musician. You now have to prove that you are the greatest in the world on your instrument. And do it. And, you, and, he, and he wrote back, he said, I've never been so inspired. Mm. And he has no money or anything. But now, He's provoked and, he, and he, feels he has to do it. So this whole situation for artists is awful because already the young musicians, they are, they are struggling to just survive. Mm -hmm. this, and the older generation like me, yes, we've been around a long time, even though I know all the concerts that I, that I was supposed to do in this time, all gone, mm -hmm. even the charity concerts. And the UN, the UN Jazz Day at the end of April in Cape Town is gone. gone. And I can see that, that our tour, in European tour in July, 
I am very nervous about it. So very sad, yes. But I have to accept it because you cannot fight reality. That's a waste of energy. So I, I accept it. And what am I going to do about it is the big question. And this is the question in the moment now, what will I do about it? Mm. And, and if we have this belief in ourselves, and, and it won't make you any money at the moment, but by expanding our awareness and expanding our, our belief mm. in the, the, what we can do as human beings, because we sell ourselves short, we are, we are not, we are infinite beings, but we have to work at it. It doesn't come easily. We have to work at it. I, I, I'm 78 now and I'm still working at it. Of course. Because, you know that. because there's, no other, there's, there's no other way to live. Life always should be an adventure. Mm. Means there's risk, but what's life without a little risk? And we have to dare to go for it. And so if this means, please, you have to stay at home. So use this time, use this precious time because we have 24 hours a day and it's like money. How are you spending it? Are you sitting in front of the TV watching movies? Are you just sleeping? Are you this work? If you are a musician, you have to work because nothing comes easy. And when I say practice, I mean determined practice, which is the most useful one because it's dedicated and it's work and can be boring. But because you have this dream of perfection, because the only really great dreams are the ones of perfection. Indeed. which we all are, in fact, as the great Zen master said when he came in to, the, to give a lecture to all the people in front of me, he said, what can I say? You are all perfect, but you could all use a little improvement. <laughs> it's true. Very appropriate. <laughs> indeed, so, I, indeed. Excuse me for my little speech, but, but uh, we are in very troubled times, and I worry. I worry, I worry about, I worry about America because they have no leadership. Uh, I'm more confident with what's happening in Europe. The, the, the leaders, they are much more serious about it, apart from the Brits. But then the Brits aren't European. <laughs> yeah. True. Also, also Brazil, also Brazil is a bit worrisome. Uh, yes, yes. Our Brazilian friends that I talk to are really worried uh, about their situation and their leadership. Yeah, I fully. <laughs> Actually, uh, the, the, the very, very wise what you said. That the, indeed, the young Turkish drummer, Ferit Odman, who recently released an album on Ted Dameron, uh, he's in his 30s. He's, I was talking to Ferit the other day and he said, it's a great opportunity for us to be at home and think about new models uh, and uh, train, work, uh, new models for creativity. He said, I'm sure my generation now is very busy under these circumstances. But yes. apart from that, maybe a couple of words, uh, what, you know, there is a huge amount of people admiring what you do, the, the other jazz musicians, vast universe that they bring to us. Um, we always thought of supporting them. We supported them. We kept supporting them. But under these circumstances, what could, what everyone should do uh, to support musicians in general? Not only jazz musicians, but musicians in general. Is there anything else to say about that under these circumstances? To what support, could, support themselves? No, support we outsiders, we non-musicians art lovers, music lovers, what could we do to support jazz musicians or musicians in general? <laughs> Can you prepare your checkbook? <laughs> Any ways that we can, uh, because a lot of people help each other 
so I thought okay. maybe uh, this, I I am involved even on that side. Yep, yeah, because there are there are some of some of the people I I help, they become desperate. There is mm. desperation, and so since I'm in a position to help, I do, because you cannot say no to mm. call for help. True. But what can the what can the the situation uh, is very difficult, even I think for the non-musician to to participate, simply because of the evolution in society with regard to music and the attitude that's prevalent for the last 10 years towards music. Music is free. You know, if we can get it free, why not? Uh, it's, it's, it's a lack of education. Uh, from the beginning, it should have been, it should have been um, explained clearly that like software, music uh, needs support from the people who create it. It needs support to the people who create, the people who create software. But because it's so abstract and can be so easily copied, people do thoughtlessly without thinking of the, of the ramifications of those musicians behind it. I really don't know how to answer your question, Yavuz, because, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm really on the other side of the fence. Uh, it's not a fence, on the other side of the, the divide uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a performer. Um, what can, what can a non-musician do other than buy records? Uh, there are certainly no concerts to go to for the moment. Um, You'll see. Send good vibes, Yavuz. <laughs> we all need good vibes. We all need those, those blessings. That we will do. Who, that we will do. Who support us, who listen to, to our music. And one final question. Uh, yes. Of course, an overall level. I mean, uh, you were inspiration to us, to my generation. I'm 63 years old. Uh, we grew up in 60s with those ideals uh, of a one world, better world for our children and grandchildren. Now uh, we are facing this. Maybe it's a lesson. Maybe it's a message to us all. Um, what could we, and we know that we mistreated this planet, uh, it's showing us all the signs that uh, that mistreatment, climate, etc., the environment, the other parts, elements of our nature. Uh, what should we, uh, as as human beings, conclude at the moment? Lessons, in a few words. To be Positive. aware. To be aware. To be really and truly aware of who we are, and where we are. Mm. We are sentient beings living in this fabulous mysterious universe it's so magnificent and beautiful and this beautiful planet we live on and i think i feel that at the end of this because people have been obliged to go in instead of out this is what we suggest to all people if you can't go outside go inside because inside is also the great adventure. The only adventure really we are here for, to know who we are, what we are, and why we are here. We are only here to take care of each other. Only love is, 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 the, is only that the reason for any existence. At the heart of the universe, this is my feeling. So, coming out of it, I'm hoping that more people will be aware of where we live. Do we revere our planet, who is our only mother, really, supports all of us without exception? Do we take care of it? We don't. We abuse it before economic gains. Hopefully, we will see people will see that there's another way to live. Uh, we won't get it tomorrow, but once we have a more altruistic society, it means a society that cares for itself. Because every single human being is no less than any other human being. 
We are all part of the divine plan, the cosmos. But we are cynical, we become cynical, we are as egoistic to a fault. Uh, society with its, with its uh, financial rewards and, and outer expressions of success, if you will. Uh, I think, I feel that we have been pushed into another state of awareness and that we change us. But I'm certainly changed. I mean, we continue to do our meditation and, and try to do the best we can for everybody. Uh, like millions of other, there's some wonderful people in the world, but more people need to be aware of who they are and why they are here on this beautiful planet. Uh, may I ask you one thing? Mm -hmm. Because uh, as a musician, about uh, when the coronavirus came out, mm -hmm. um, and we're all stuck at home, we decided to make this free, a free download. We'll start you don't have to buy it, you can get it free because we're all at home. Uh, and you will have an email with the link if you can just tell people if they want to, it's free. That's so generous and gracious of you, John. Thank you very, very much for this wonderful conversation, full of wisdom. My guest was uh, John McLaughlin, master musician talking about the COVID-19 epidemic and its impact on the global artistic community. Thank you, John. I hope we meet again on the better circumstances, Yavuz. Thank you for inviting Very me. Same. Thank you so much. guitar and hoping to attract your attention because I want to remind all guitar players anybody for that matter that this time of confinement is really precious and we can use it um, to work we have to stay at home to protect the nurses and doctors and all the ambulance drivers around the world who really take care of us. So let's use this time to work on all those weak spots that we know about in our playing. I've been working just now at a, a rhythmical cycle uh, in seven, which is such a lonely cycle, but I got to work at it because life without work at the music is unthinkable. So get to it. <laughs> 